Don't you love it when a game just hits that sweet spot of immersion and you just find hours of your life dripping away as you become fully enveloped in the game? Well, we're going in a different direction today, kids, as instead of happiness and joy, we're going to talk about anger, frustration and rage boners. That's right, my little salt shakers, Daddy Jules is angry and he's got a motherfucking list for you on enemies he goddamn despises. Now, I've actually already made a somewhat similar list on 10 annoying sidekicks, which detailed people like Slippy, Roman and Ashley Graham. You know, the sort of people who are about as painful as testicular surgery being conducted with a brick, so they won't be on this list. However, there are many, many more to choose from, so let's take a deep breath and gather what's left of our blancmange-like scrotums. With this in mind, I'm Jules of WhatCulture.com, here with a list on the 10 most hated video game characters. Number 10. Guilty Spark When you're the most badass tin of green pea soup in the known galaxy, aka the Master Chief, you think you'd get a lot of respect. The marines that fight alongside you know of your prowess and the enemies speak in hushed tones of your legendary ferocity. But I tell you what, that doesn't mean jack to 343 Guilty Spark, whose smarmy, know-it-all tone and dismissive nature render it one of the most annoying characters in existence. That and the small fact that he's trying to kill you and the entire galaxy through getting you to to activate Halo's defense systems. Even when he's discovered he doesn't apologize, instead using his own warped logic to defend his position on exterminating all sentient life and then calling in his synthetic stooges to try and mug you of the index. Utter twat fodder. Number 9. Duke Nukem There was once a time when Duke Nukem was a much-loved and cherished video game icon. He was the ultimate representation of hyper-masculinity, and for a time his unrestrained machismo and raunchy attitude attracted a large following. However, after a long period of... Well, nothing, Duke Nukem Forever was released to little fanfare, and while gamers had moved on, Duke Nukem had not. And the result is a character that, in hindsight, offers almost nothing in the way of substance or humour. Whether Duke Nukem appeals to your sensibility or not, the fact is that he deserves to be hated. His attitude and quips are on the level of an immature 12-year-old boy, and he commits the biggest sin of simply not being funny. He's dated, forced, and in my opinion, not deserving of another comeback. Number 8. Shao Kahn Shao Kahn is one of the characters most synonymous with the Mortal Kombat franchise. This iconic villain is the ruler of Outworld and spends most of the first three games in the series trying to conquer Earthrealm through the Mortal Kombat tournament. It's actually a wonder he doesn't succeed, because Shao Kahn has got to be one of the most unfairly difficult bosses in any video game ever made. To put it bluntly, he's a wallet rapist, forcing those playing against him in the arcade to shell out countless coins to carry on trying to kick his teeth in. He's almost telepathic in how he blocks your moves and doles out punishments like you've signed up to his personal S&M club. Whether you've successfully defeated him numerous times or have yet to do so even once, all who have faced Shao Kahn curse his name and his stupid skull mask. Sure, he might be a megalomaniacal monster, but the real reason everyone hates Shao Kahn is because he's a cheap, overpowered and cocky meathead. Number 7. Edgar Ross When Red Dead Redemption first begins, it's not immediately apparent that Edgar Ross will be the character you'll end up hating the most. The game starts with our hero John Marston riding off to kill an old gang member of his at Ross's orders. This is only a red herring, of course. As the game continues and Edgar Ross keeps extending the deal, it slowly dawns on you that he is the true villain, culminating in an ending betrayal that stokes the fires within even the coldest of hearts. Thankfully though, the game ends properly on an epilogue that lets you play as John's son, avenging his death. It's an immensely satisfying moment that only reinforces just how much you came to hate this man by the end. Number 6. Tom Nook Animal Crossing is supposed to be a game about relaxing, exploration, customization, and generally just having a good old time. It's not meant to be about indentured servitude to one Tom Nook, but boy howdy is that how things begin, as this Tanuki tyrant unloads a house on you at a ridiculous value, meaning that you're in his pocket for a very, very, very long time. And just look at this exchange. No paperwork, no contractor assessment that proves the house is on a solid foundation. There's not even a clue as to how he came up with such a large figure in the first place. All you do know, however, is that you're going to need to sell a lot of fish, butterflies and other paraphernalia in order to get out of the grip of this one Tom Nook. And I mean, yeah, I guess looking back at this entry, my hatred for this gent is one born out of a frustration that I can actually never get onto the property ladder. And I know, that's not a joke. But neither is the housing crisis. 
Number 5. Fee. Zelda has had some downright annoying characters. The Fishmen, Navi, and even Tingle, who I goddamn love, but he got on my wick sometimes. But the character who filled me with more rage than when my mum washed my waifu body pillow was none other than this drip headed goop girl, Fee. Now, Fee tries to be a useful character, but the problem is, is that she's so invasive. Opening a chest, Fee. Killing an enemy, Fee. Entering a dungeon, Fee. Fee, 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 fi, fo, fum, f off. Number four, the catalyst. There are many, many reasons that people hate the catalyst. For one, his presence creates huge plot holes and contradicts so much of the intricate law that was established beforehand, and his philosophical musings and circular arguments make little sense. Many consider his reveal as the moment that the Mass Effect series collapsed within itself, causing many fans to cry out in despair. It also doesn't help that he insists on presenting himself as that stupid kid that no one felt sorry for at the beginning of the game. It's almost as if it was hastily conceptualized and written with little thought towards anything that preceded its appearance. Oh, know anything about that, EA? Number 3. Big the Cat When you think about Sonic the Hedgehog, you probably think speed, dudes with toods, and not f***ing fishing minigames. Big the Cat is a lumbering oaf with the brain functionality of a bread bin whose sole role in Sonic Adventure 1 was to fish his dullard pet froggy out of numerous pools of water because the little green bastard had eaten a piece of the Chaos Emerald. So while all the other Sonic members were saving the world, destroying robots and generally moving faster than an iceberg, Team Sonic thought it'd be a great idea to slow the pace down and play a minigame with this furry moron, which in practice was more infuriating than trying to complete Sonic 06 100%. Also sandals. No thank you, please. Number two, Blue. Blue, or as he's more commonly known, f you, Gary Oak, you monstrous knobhead, is the main antagonist in Pokemon Red and Blue, popping up to challenge the player to matches at the worst possible times. Honest to Christ, I straight up hated this brash bellend, as encountering him was like a kick to the vile plumes. You see, he was always just one step ahead of you, constantly mocking your achievements and even beating the Elite Four before you've even stepped through the door. And let me tell you, nothing has spurred me on to grind my Pokemon to ridiculously high levels just so I can smash his smug face in like the phrase, smell you later. Yeah? Well, you know what, Gaza? I'm glad your Rattata is dead. Yes, that's right, I said it. And number one, Eric Sparrow. Okay, so you thought I was getting pretty riled up at Gary Oak there, didn't you? Well, that guy has nothing compared to the hatred that I feel towards Eric Sparrow from Tony Hawk's Underground. The reason behind my vitriol is that Eric actually starts off as a friend, helping you get noticed by the skate pros and making ways within the skating community. The problem then surfaces when Eric begins to sabotage your career, failing to sign you up for a competition, then lying about who it was that popped over the police helicopter, even going so far as to try and destroy your credibility with the other pros. And it's all in the name of money. Eric could give two squirts of piss about the soul of the sport and is only in it for the ducats. What began as a friendly rivalry escalates out of control in such a way that you can't help but scream in frustration when this shaved little scrote betrays you again and again. It's actually the reason why I played through the game twice, because on the second run after ending Sparrow's pathetic trick line, you get to administer a well-deserved elbow to the chops. Smell you later, Sparrow. And that's our list. I know that there were many, many, many more gaming characters out there that you all despise, so let me know about them in the comments section below. And if you want to come share your despair, then you can do so here or with me on my personal Twitter, RetroJ with a zero. If you enjoyed this video, then like, share, and subscribe for more. As always, I've been Jules of WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.